All right, Boston and Golden State tonight in San Francisco. The Warriors are a four-point favorite at home. Total here is 210 and a half. I believe this is the lowest total we've seen throughout this entire series. Chris, you said you weren't going with the first quarter play tonight. So what are you going with? Yeah, not the first quarter, but I'm going to go with a first half bet here. Now, I still think the total on the game could fall under that mark. Uh, you know, was that around 212? Now it's going down a little bit. Uh, Again, in a lot of these games, especially in the second half, the action is going to slow down a little bit. We've seen that extremely in the fourth quarter especially. Uh, but I think this game has a good chance to, to start off with a lot of points and a lot of pace. And that's because when the Celtics attack offensively, when they're the aggressors from the beginning, there tends to be more points. They tend to win the game. And what other response are they supposed to have after Steph Curry did that? To them in Boston at the TD Garden Center, they have to come out with extra, extra, extra motivation and aggression. Uh, so I think that we're going to see the best version of the Celtics early. We're going to see a lot of offense attacking the paint. Yeah, again, that stat about Jason Tatum, right, and Jalen Brown and how their field goal percentage isn't even as good as Steph's three-point percentage. Everyone's talking about Steph. That has to be a little, you know, that has to irk Jason Tatum a little bit. I mean, they all love Steph too. Steph is hard not to love. You know, he's a very lovable character. He's a he's a he's a superstar player. But Jason Tatum wants to be seen as if he's on the same level. Right. So I, I expect better things from Jason Tatum in this one. He really didn't have a good game in game four. I think it was nine of 19 from the field. Um, the players like Derek Smith, too, they should have better games. You know, he, he by far had his worst game in game four. Um, and, and, you know, when the Celtics win, there tends to tends to be higher scoring. And there's this little phenomenon that takes place in these games especially when the Celtics are the aggressors, the Warriors love to just turn around and go right back down the court for a quick response, right? We see that all the time. That's not necessarily the case the other way around. If, if the Warriors are attacking, but Boston's just trying to settle into their schemes, they don't necessarily attack in the same way. So I think uh, the Celtics kind of giving a, a boost to the pay, pace in this game should create more points overall. So I'm going to go with the first half over, a little scared of that second half, a little scared of the full game over. But I think the first half is around 102 and a half, 103. That's still pretty low for me. I think these teams can eclipse it. And we saw in those two previous games when the Celtics won, which I do think that the, I would side with them in this game at plus four. It's a little too many points, especially now that the series is tied. Mm -hmm. um, but when the Celtics do well, right, there's a lot of points and there's a lot of points early in the game. So I'm going to go with the first half over and we'll, We'll see what happens after that. Well, I, I like that move. I'm not going to be scared to play the first quarter tonight just because you are. I'm going to play the first quarter over. It was at 50 and a half. That's where I grabbed it up to 52 right now. I think that's pretty low. The lowest scoring quarter uh, that we've seen for our first quarter, that is throughout this entire series is been 55. I mean, we've been up to the sixties. What was it? 60 and 61 in golden state in games one and two uh, in the first quarter. So I, I like the over 52. Uh, I agree with you. The pace in the first half has been around a hundred averaging 110 points in that first half drops all the way to 90 in the second half. And uh, first quarter plays have been fairly successful, not only for you, Chris, but I've had a couple of them uh, this series, too. So I'm going to stick with the first quarter and play the over there. Alex, no pick for you tonight. What is going on? Uh, all the numbers have, have kind of, I know, I'm a coward. I should probably have something tonight. I, to be honest, I will end up with some live unders. I, I think you guys are right. The, the beginning of these games, especially in Golden State, we've seen a quicker pace, a lot more points. But when we get into the second half of these games, they really grind down. The pace drops a lot. Second half unders have been very good. I think they're 3-1 and one or something in the series so far. And, uh, you know, as I've said a couple times, I have this total for all these games. And, again, it's, as a modeler, you basically take in all your data. It doesn't change too much game to game at the beginning of the series i thought the total should be 209 at this point i think it should be 208 and a half so uh, we've seen the total drop down and it makes sense to me at the the shooting has been particularly good in certain spots in these games, and there's been a little bit of funky end game stuff, and that's what you see. That's what you see in a seven-game series. It's a lot of games, but there's still a bunch of variants here. I'm terrified as a Celtic supporter. Um, I've been pretty vocal and said over and over again, I think Boston's the better team and they win the series, but golly, was that just an awful fourth quarter to watch everybody playing hot potato but Alan Marcus. I mean... 
Tatum was not taking over the game like he should be. I mean, that's when it's time. That's when it's time to shoot those mid-range jumpers. That's when it's time to go into ISO ball, tell everybody to clear out and take a breath so they can, you know, be better on the defensive end. But instead, the ball's moving around and not just moving around because they're looking for good shots because nobody wanted it. Um, and with all due respect, Marcus Smart is not the guy you want with the most confidence there at the end of the game. And Horford, again, was probably number two in that category. And that's just that's not what you want to be on a roster with Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. So we'll see what the Celtics can do tonight. I just I really wonder how that team's feeling after kind of sitting in that um, stew, if you will, for the last couple of days and having to come out and, you know, not only shake that off, but have to do it in Golden State. So I still see value on the unders. I still see value on Boston, but I just can't get myself there. Boston has been fantastic after a lost 7-0 and straight up and against the spread. Chris, you that carry any weight for you? I know we talk about trends all the time and we don't really listen to them and whatnot, but I mean, that's a pretty good record there to be seven and L coming off of a loss. Yeah, it sure is. I mean, I think it carries a lot of weight and they, again, they seem to be more comfortable on the road. They seem to be more comfortable as underdogs. Uh, they seem to be more comfortable responding to things as opposed to just, you know, being the champion, right. Or being the one who's like normalized to being in these situations. They're not yet. Right. And that, and that is the difference. You know, we saw that stat at the start of the finals, how the uh, experienced players on the Warriors had like 20 finals appearances and the you know Celtics had zero. Right. So yeah, they have playoff experience. They have big game experience, a little different than NBA finals experience when you're going to have at least one player. And that one player has certainly been Steph Curry who is just going to not let his team fall behind, right? He's going to put in full effort and grit. And the Celtics are having trouble responding in those moments. Um, but that being said, in the game, where they're, when the backs have been against the wall, they, they have responded and responded really well. And, you know, credit to Ime Udoka and the way that he coaches his players. And to Alex's point, too, a really great point, I think, because, you know, Ime is all about spreading that ball around, you know, team basketball, but, in those situations, it, it it can't be that, right? You have to step up if you're Jalen Brown, if you're Jason Tatum. That is your role. You are seen as a superstar now in the NBA. You're getting the big, you know, uh, contracts. Uh, you're getting, the, you know, you know, signed by uh, new companies who are taking on new athletes. Show up, you know. You get, you have to do that in those spots. Uh, so it's it's going to be interesting to see tonight. I mean. We keep on saying this in the series as it goes up and down, up and down, but now it's it's game five. So now it's a best of three. Um, so now it gets even more important if the Celtics can win tonight, big if, but then obviously it goes back to TD Garden and they're right back in the driver's seat. Let's see if they can handle If they win tonight, that's going to be a lot of pressure on them again to ha- handle that final situation. And they might have to win tonight without Robert Williams. He's questionable. It's supposed to be a game-time decision. Ime Adoka said he's going to wait and warm up and see how he feels. But if he can't go tonight, I think that's a massive blow to the Celtics. We saw after he went out in game four, late in the fourth quarter, Warriors scored a bunch. They kind of got whatever they wanted. So, Alex, is, is Robert Williams and whether or not he plays tonight almost one of the keys to which team had success in tonight's game? I actually wonder if him being off the floor helps. Um, He's definitely not 100 percent. And the big adjustment we saw the Warriors make in the second half of that game, Kerr basically decided he's only going to play one of Looney or Draymond. And and that creates a much smaller lineup, which means you can really only play one of Robert Williams and one of Horford. And if he's not 100 percent, I don't want him out there trying to do those switches and, and all those particular things. So on some level, I think it's always better to have all your players be as healthy as they can be. And I guess you're right. They'd be better with a healthy Robert Williams. I just don't think that's what we're talking about. Chris, what are your thoughts on Robert Williams and whether or not he uh, is able to go tonight? Well, the one area where the Celtics really need to clean up is they cannot allow Golden State to get offensive rebounds the way that they have. And maybe Robert Williams has been a liability in that way, right? Because he's not his, his athleticism isn't fully there. It's not, you know, he, he's still been a good player throughout the series and especially in some games, but you know, maybe in that last game, you get some of these other guys out there who you know, don't have anything holding them back. Maybe that's a better thing for the Celtics uh, because the the offensive rebounding. If you if you compare the Golden State Warriors in, in Game Four to the rest of the, of the league in offensive rebounding per game, their average was in the 90th percentile. I mean, they were, they did a fantastic job in that game. Uh, so you know that has to stop. I mean, the Golden State Warriors. They're too good offensively to give them second chances. So I, I, I imagine that Ime Udoka is going to do the best thing for his team, and I agree with Alex. If he's less than 100%, even, even you know, 90% probably isn't good enough against this Warriors team and just how tenacious they can be on the boards.